Hey, hey, good morning. I guess it's almost lunchtime for you guys. <laughs> it's still morning here. It's 8.30 a.m. That's why I changed the time so that, because I didn't want to get up early. <laughs> um, all right, so let's get started. This is going to be a very gentle move session today. So those of you guys who are like crushing it right now, you might want to do a replay instead. This is literally like a recovery, restorative. Um, if you're just starting, like if you're, hey Ashley, if you're just starting to work out, this might be fine for you. But um, if, you, if you've been working out, this might be a little, a little too easy. It's just gonna be a short one, 20 to 30 minutes. Um, the idea is just for me, just to move my body. I'm gonna move this back a little bit. Just to kind of really, do some mobility stuff. Um, we flew all day yesterday, it was a, a flying day. And so, you know, sitting for many, many hours, uncomfortable sitting, I might add. Um, oh my gosh, the, there's no like sound on. I had a really good timer. Okay, let's go to these guys. I had a really good timer that I was using and I couldn't, Fine, I left it to the last minute to find this morning and I couldn't find it. So now I'm gonna have to watch watch the stinking timer. Um, yeah, we flew, oh, I booked our flight for uh, 6.30 a.m. <laughs> so because I was flying international, I thought, okay, I have to, I have to have, um, I have to be there three hours. I can't talk and watch a timer at the same time, you guys. To be there three hours for international flights, right? And so I had to be there at 3.30 a.m., which meant I needed to be picked up at 2.30 a.m., which meant I had to be up at 2 a.m. And as it would turn out, my son got scheduled for a makeup game, baseball game the night before, in Etobicoke. <laughs> A uh, two and a half hour game, 7.30, so 7.30 till 10. So I did not get home till after 11. And of course, I don't know about you guys, I can't like just come home and go to sleep. So I, I kind of wrapped my head around the fact that, you know what, I'm not gonna really get a lot of sleep tonight, but that's okay, I'm traveling, I can sleep on the way, whatever. Um, funny, because normally <laughs> that would have really stressed me out, but I, I'm really working on this skill, or I don't know if it's a skill, but perspective that, and somebody posted something, I'm not, a, I'm not a spiritual religious person. Let me rephrase that, I'm not a religious person, but I'm working on my spirituality in terms of having faith and trust in like a greater power, the universe, whatever you wanna call it, spirit, um, whatever you believe in, I have, I'm working on my faith in the, in this bigger power that knows, knows what they're doing, right? Like that, that things are placed in our path, experiences, circumstances, people, choices, both bad and good. Things are put in our path for a reason to guide us in a certain way, teach us whatever. There's always, you know, I think it takes age. <laughs> age life experience to realize if you look back on a number of the things that you know didn't work out the way that you thought they were supposed to right whether it's a relationship whether it's a job whether you know way back to high school you didn't get into the university that you wanted the boy that you wanted to date didn't want to date you all these things at the time feel wrong to you and yet when you as you age you, oh, hang on, these guys. You realize they were very, very right for you, right? You didn't make the team you wanted to, um, whatever it is. And so I'm really embracing that concept in my life over the last couple of years, knowing that, oh, well, this isn't what I thought I wanted or needed, but if I have faith, then it's going to be okay. And you know, the opposite of faith is fear. Like faith and fear cannot reside 
at the same time. We cannot feel both, cannot feel faith and feel fear at the same time. You either have faith or you have fear. So one of the things I've been thinking about over the last couple of weeks is if I'm feeling fear, I'm not feeling faith. And so what it does is it forces me to go, okay, reevaluate. What am I feeling fearful of? What do I not have faith in? And how can I change that? Because fear is just a is just a reflection of the fact that you don't have faith. Oh, there's police outside. <laughs> and so, you know, that night did not, you know, materialize how, you know, and I could blame it on the fact that, well, I'm the one that woke this thinking to 6.30 flight. Why didn't I think about that back then? But I didn't, and I did book that flight, and I chose to look at it like, this is you letting go of things not being the way that you want them to, because that's going to be the four and a half days that I'm out on the trail. And it really is, this is a reflection of life. Things will not be always the way that you think that they're supposed to be that you want them to. Sometimes you have to let go of the control of that. Uh, and so I, I did, I didn't stress about it at all. I came home, had a beer with my husband, we chatted for a bit. I, I slept on the couch because what I was fearful of was not waking up to my alarm because I would have just fallen asleep. And I was like, oh my gosh, I might fall, I might sleep through my alarm. So I was afraid of not waking up and I was afraid of my airport taxi guy not showing up because I booked it online and I didn't have to pay for anything. So I was like, did we do these already? Yes, we did, right? Oh my gosh, you can't, can't think, talk, and watch the clock all at the same time. Um, yeah, I just booked booked this person. He seemed very cheap compared to some of the other places I looked at. But I figured, well, worst case, if he doesn't show up, I'll just I'll just drive. It's not a big deal. He did show up. Um, as it turns out, this is where where my story started. I went to the airport. My plan was to get there for three hours before. Um, it turns out that because we we're flying through Calgary to Washington, or Portland we were landing in, we didn't have to go through customs in Toronto, which is why you do three hours instead of two hours when it's um, international, right, versus domestic. So I could have slept for another hour, <laughs> at least, because um, it literally took me probably less than half an hour from when we got dropped off to being at the gate going through security. <laughs> um, so I slept on the floor at the airport and my daughter was like, ew, because the floor was like literally filthy. There was crumbs and, and I was like, I'm one of those homeless type people <laughs> moving through the airport, but that is literally what I'm going to be for four and a half days. Like I said to her, I'm going to be sleeping on a lot worse <laughs> than that over the next <laughs> week. So letting go, letting go of floor germs. And this just in, my son just got his license. Side note, I kind of figured he would because it seems like they pass everyone. <laughs> like I literally think you have to break the law to not get your license. Um, my daughter's gonna hate that I say this, but I've told her this before. The day that she went for her license, I was quite confident she was going to fail. And of course I didn't tell her that. I wished her luck. You know, I sent her all the good vibes and I sat waiting for her preparing my consolation speech for, you know, her failing and how I was gonna, you know, rationalize it and be like, it's okay, you know, try again, whatever. And she came back and she passed and I literally almost fell over. I was like, and I, what I wanted to say, how? How did you pass? Like, there is no way you should have passed. They freaking must pass anybody. And again, recently, she went to do her test for her highway. Like, she had to get her G-test. Well, she left it to the absolute 
literally absolute last minute. So if she failed, she would have had to, she would have lost her license and had to start all over again because it was gonna expire. And she has next to no experience, didn't take any lessons, and I was like, there's no way <laughs> that she should pass. But I remembered in my head, pretty sure they pass everybody. Okay. Like literally unless you cause an accident or <laughs> run a stop sign or I, I think, so this morning I was kind of nervous for my son, but I thought, mm, if, they, if he doesn't pass, and he, I think she literally passed everybody. Huh? I think I did pass. Oh yeah, she did pass. You didn't and complimented my driving. <laughs> the lady complimented her driving. Oh, I heard him. And no. Okay. Um, okay, give me one second, you guys. I'm gonna see if I can find my other timer because this is the one that I didn't like. So we're gonna do Tabata today. Um, and we're, we're going to be really gentle. Create your own. I think this is not fast. No, oh, maybe. Hit timer. Eight. Yep, found it, you guys. Okay, give me two seconds. I'm just setting the timer. Low intensity. Two seconds. All right, we're in business. Okay, grab a drink. I am sweating a little bit. It doesn't take much. I'm telling you guys. Who's joining me today live? Hey, Yvonne. Hey, Don. Oh, my gosh. Look at you all. I almost canceled. Like, I almost was just going to do it later on because I thought nobody was going to join me live. You guys, it's going to be a lame workout. I'm not going to lie. Hmm. I shouldn't say lame. It's going to be a beginner workout. Okay. We're going to start with core. Um, what is happening? Like this. Okay, so let's start in plank. You guys probably can't see me. I'm sorry. Maybe you can. We're starting in plank, holding plank for 20 seconds. We are going to focus a little bit on core today. Core and mobi mobility stuff. Okay, resting. And we're switching to, we're turning over and doing bolts. We're alternating between plank and bolt. Can you guys see me okay? Um, so anyways, one of the lessons that I learned that I'm really trying to make like a life credo, like a life, um, what do you call it? When it's something that you live your life by. Mantra? No, not mantra, like not credo, like you're, I don't know, I can't think of the word, but, and that is to have faith, not fear. And if you have faith, oh, there's a raisin on the floor. A what? Raisin. Ew. If you have faith, we're going to switch between high and low plane. You can't, you can't have fear. How amazing would it feel? Do any of you guys already live this way? When you know without a doubt that everything that passes through your life is going to work out for you like it's going to be okay not only is it going to be okay but it's probably going to be the right thing like um i'm 46 almost 47 in january and living your life this way brings you such a feeling of peace and calm because you know inevitably when things happen that you're like yeah that that's not how i saw that going that's not how i thought it was going to go, you let it go because you go, okay, there's a reason why, you know, and side note in our lives right now, like my boys are all, or two of them are going through, you know, baseball, try, it's tryout season, right? So every year, August, September is a little bit emotional and disruptive in our life because they have to try out and it, it's, a, it's a potential for change, often <laughs> not necessarily the changes that you wanted to see. Um, and so I went into this year letting go of the anxiety and thinking to myself, here's the thing, everything's going to be the way it's supposed to be. So whatever happens, if it happens, and sure enough, my one son um, 
got moved to a different team for next year, my initial thought was, because it was not <laughs> what I was expecting, I mean, I, I you kind of know every year it's gonna be the unexpected that's going to happen. But as I reflected on it and looked at it from a different perspective, and that's the thing, we see things through one lens, right? Like we see things through our assumptions and expectations. And um, I listened to the Daily Calm on the flight here yesterday, and it said, the mantra that it taught us was like, may I live without bias and may I live without, I think it was expectations. No, it wasn't expectations, it was a different word, but something because the something that related to expectations. So when you have an expectation of how something's gonna look like, that's why it can kind of sometimes rock you a little bit because you're like, that's not what I was expecting to happen. That's not what the outcome I was expecting. When you that's round one. When you can oh, the police are talking to people now. When you can let that go and understand that your expectation wasn't necessarily the correct path for you or whoever, you can be, you can open your mind to looking at the situation from a different angle, different perspective, and all of a sudden the anxiety and stress that sometimes we feel in life can be released, right? Um, so we're going to alternate between air squats and front lunges. Now, again, those of you who aren't recovering, relaxing, restoring this week. Um, you can use weights for this next one. All right, let's go. Let me figure out how to do this. All right, so air squats. So try, driving the knees sort of out over your toes <coughs> You want your feet probably about shoulder width or hip width apart, depending probably which is wider. Some women have narrow shoulders, wider hips. I have wider shoulders, narrow hips. I meant to take my shoes off. And so now we're gonna do um, forward lunges, alternating. And this is really for mobility. Like these are, these are movements that I like to do. I mean, squats are part of the um, iron will, the daily movement challenge, because I really believe like when you wake up in the morning and you do 10 air squats to, to loosen up your hips and create some mobility in this area of your body after sleeping all day or all night or sitting all day, like to just do air squats through your day. Um, last year when we did the air squats challenge month, whatever month, air squats was the move, the movement. We worked our way up. So we started with 10, we worked up to, I don't know how many at the end of the month, but we increased. What you can do is do 10 in the morning when you get up, do 10 in the middle of the day after you've been sitting all morning, if you have an office job, do 10 at night after you've been sitting all afternoon and then driving. Um, it's just really great to kind of loosen up what can happen, especially as we age, is we get a lot of tightness and tension through the hips, and it really wreaks havoc in our body. So like one of the reasons I'm doing this move session with you guys is to undo the tension from, I was telling you guys, so I was at the airport, but we're up at 2 a.m., um, picked up 2.30 at the airport by 3.20, at our gate by I think 3.40, 3.45, sorry, yes. And um, our flight was at 6.30. So we just sat and later, I actually slept on the floor, like I said, my duffel bag was my pillow <laughs> and I looked like a homeless person sleeping at the airport. So I didn't care, because that is who I am over the next week. I was channeling <laughs> and becoming the identity that I'm taking on for the week <laughs> is what I was doing. So I embraced it, I fell asleep, I had a great, I had a great sleep. Um, probably not that long, maybe 20, 30 minutes that I, but I was dreaming, so I was, I was out. Um, you know, sat at the gate, sat on a four hour flight, got off, sat on a two hour flight, got here, 
drove to the hotel and we're, we were exhausted. So then we just sat. So movement is needed. Our bodies need movement. Our bodies were designed for movement. We don't live usually a very, even if you work out every day, like you might, I know Ashley, you work out, um, like even if you're doing your workouts and runs, like Heather as an example, yeah, she works out and she runs. What do you do for the rest of your day? What do you do for the bulk of the time of your day? So you can work out every day, you can run every day. Maybe that's, maybe that's two hours a day, let's say. If you're sitting the rest of the day, almost, it almost, I'm not saying like you, like it's better than not working out or running, but I'm saying if, you, for, if you're up for, let's say, 16 hours, let's say, of your day, and only two of those include movement, it's a thing like how can you include more movement in your day because your body was not designed to be sedentary. Um, it's not how the machine was built. So it's like a car. If you park a car for months of the year, you know, they say it's like the worst thing for a vehicle. It has to be taken out and driven. Let me take my shoes off and do these in my bare feet. So we're going to do spider plank and bicycles next. So gentle, but core, but also exercises that promote movement and mobility. So one of the reasons, one of the inspirations or um, the goals, I guess, objectives of, of the Iron Will Challenge is exactly that, to insert movement through either throughout your day, if you don't do it all at once, or to give you another little session of moving your body. Because those of you who do the Iron Will Challenge know that it takes, aside from the, Okay, so you're bringing your knee up to your shoulder or your elbow. It takes 10 minutes less, probably less, to do the iron wheel challenge. 10 minutes plus 10 if you're doing the, because this month is walking, right? And when you think about 10 minutes of walking in say a 16 hour day, I don't want to hear you don't have 10 minutes. Like I don't believe nobody has, anybody doesn't have 10 minutes in their day to get some walking in, right? Whether it's on your lunch break, whether it's you get up 10 minutes earlier, anybody can get up 10 minutes earlier. Um, you know, one of the, the other challenge this month was to give up social media <clears throat> for the first hour of your day. There's your 10 minutes to go walk, right? Because easily you spend 10 minutes in the morning or throughout the day on your phone, on your on social media. And I know I, I'm kind of heartless when it comes to the 10 minute walking challenge because <clears throat> my son and I have been doing a, a one mile run minimum every single day for, well, he's on day over 1,350. Is I missed, I missed a few days because I sprained my ankle. And if I wasn't training for something, <laughs> I might have actually hobbled through those days, but I didn't because I was training for this event, which is crazy, because that was way back in November. <clears throat> I was thinking last night, like, it's kind of like planning a big event, like a wedding or, I don't know, that takes up so much time in your life, and now it's here, and it's gonna be over in a, in a, in a week. Like, um, I'll be, that project in my life will be done. <laughs> like, it's hard to believe. So the Iron Will, um, and the, the, the moves that I chose for the Iron Will are very carefully selected to meet a couple of different criteria. One, anybody, anybody can do them. That's why they're so small both physically and time-wise, anybody can do them. And that they create a series of movements that help your whole body um, with mobility and with like movement patterns that complement each other. That's how that was designed. It wasn't just like moves that I willy-nilly chose. You know, squats help with your hips and then some help with strength, um, core strength, 
it's balanced, um, it's chosen so that there's no overuse you know, happening. Like if you do 10 push-ups every single day, you're not gonna get a shoulder issue. And you don't have to do them all at once. You can do three, three in the morning, <laughs> three in the afternoon, four at night. Like, started I guess I don't know where we were at for that one so we're gonna do one more bicycle and then we'll I don't know how many sets that was you guys I don't know what happened to my timer on that one fully extend the leg when you're doing the bicycles all right let's take a break We'll start. We're gonna do one more. How's everybody doing today? I know me too, me too, Dawn. I meant to crank crank the air conditioning because you know what I forgot to pack? I forgot to pack exercise clothes for before. Like I have all my running stuff and then I was like, okay, what do I need when I'm not running? Well I just need a couple things for before and then a fresh out for, for after. And I didn't think about the fact that I was gonna be I am gonna be running, like I need to do a run today and tomorrow and Friday and I don't want to get my race clothes sweaty we do have a laundry facility here um, so I'm gonna have to do a little laundry okay so next up we're gonna do walk out to push-ups ready so up we walk out we do a push-up we come back if you're a beginner we used to do these a lot in the six weeks of Will when we all were just starting. You can do walk out to plank. You don't have to do the push up. Again, this is great for mobility. I'm gonna do my yoga after, and then we're gonna do, um, I'm gonna call them scissor kicks or scissors. Okay, so all the way up, all the way up. Lifting with your core. So again, for mobility, for movement, extend those legs if you can. Keep them straight if you can. I gotta bend my knees a little bit. I got really tight hamstrings. And the flight definitely <laughs> exacerbates that. I did my yoga yesterday. I'm trying to do my daily calm every day because I just use that app. I used to use it every single day because I used to, when I was really good with no social media in the morning, I had a really dedicated um, morning routine and I would get up in the morning and first I would make my coffee and I would do my meditation and my meditation was I used the, the calm app daily calm and it's about 10 minutes usually and I'm telling you Every single day she says things that you're like, oh, <laughs> like mind blowing. And two days ago when I restarted, she talked about impermanence. I think I told you guys this, or maybe I did a live on it. Impermanence and feelings and emotions. And how feelings and emotions are meant to like move, move through us. They're not meant to, to reside in us. My daughter graduated from social sciences and she said one of the concepts that they learned was what well, we, feelings and emotions are a state. They're not a being, right? So you're not, if you're sad, it's just the way you're feeling in that moment. It's just a state at that time. It's meant to, like I kind of envision, when I think about that, I think about clouds. When you look up at clouds, they're never still, right? They're constantly moving. And I think of our emotions being the same thing, but what, we t what I tend to do, I don't know about you guys, what I tend to do is, especially with negative emotions, like things like anxiety or stress, I 
they move like picture clouds. I grab onto them and I hang onto them because I'm trying to, I don't know what I'm trying to, to do, to be honest, but I think they, they scare me and I almost, they get stuck inside me, right? And what we need to do is allow them to be, not fight them, not resist them, not hold on to them, right? Same with, I guess, I guess positive feelings, right? When you're really, really happy or like that will pass too, like every state, this, your state is constantly changing. And so it's a, it's a really comforting concept for life because when you go, when you have difficult times in your life, you can just assure yourself this is temporary. Understanding everything in life is, there's a component of impermanence. And so knowing that you can just let, let that move through you. And, and it's great for me to channel for my race. Like, so yesterday, okay, I'm gonna be tired. I actually felt pretty good yesterday. And one of the blessings, just to come full circle from the beginning of the class, one of the blessings, which again, like I said, everything happens for a reason and every, everything has a purpose and lesson in our life. I napped off and on all day, 10, 10 minutes here, 20 minutes there, and I felt okay. And, I, and so it gave, gave me the confidence in my race because one of my biggest fears is being tired. I hate being tired. Gave me the confidence in my race. Hey, I can do that throughout my race. Have 10, 15, 20 minute naps throughout to take the edge off and keep going. I can also have a longer bout of sleep to get more. So anyway, it was great for my psyche. The old me would have been concerned that it would have I would have been stressed, except for nine and a half hours last night, guys. <laughs> because of the time change, we went to bed. I think we went to bed at nine here, midnight home, and slept till six here. So, got a good night's sleep. So that is it for today. I thank you all so much for being here. Um, I probably won't do a move session for the rest of the week. It's possible I might pop on if I do then, you know, but I, I'm not going to commit to anything because I'm not sure um, uh, what I'm going to do, where, I, where I'm going to be. So thank you so much. I'm going to be posting my link to follow me. If for those of you who are interested, it's not going to be that exciting. Like basically you can get up each morning and check where I am and then check when you go to bed at night. And um, sometimes I might have moved a lot and sometimes not so much because I'll be sleeping um, at points as well, possibly. So if my dot stops moving, that's probably where I'm sleeping. Um, but I'll post the link today. I'll send it in my email and um, post it wherever I can. Uh, thank you all so much, taking all your good vibes and channeling them because I need all the good luck that I can get. And um, thank you again, and I will report in when I'm done. Have a great day, you guys.